Folks, uh, sooner or later, sisters and brothers and brothers and sisters, we welcome you now at this time in this way as we come in this week of uh, Pentecost. And uh, so today we think about uh, uh, Jesus and what it meant for him to, he did the ascension, we talked about that before. And then as a result, we had the day of Pentecost came in which the spirit and the power of our Creator was bestowed upon the people in a great and powerful way. And in so doing, help them to reach out to all the people. And so today we think about that as we uh, open our Hebrew Bibles to Psalm 29. And in this way we think about uh, Nuli ni ganga, empowerment, and what that means for us today. Psalm 29. Ascribe to God, O heavenly beings, ascribe to God glory and strength. Ascribe to God the glory of God's name. Worship God in holy splendor. The voice of God is over the waters, the God of glory thunder. God over mighty waters. The voice of God is powerful. The voice of God is full of majesty. The voice of God breaks the cedars. God breaks the cedars of Lebanon. God makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of God flashes forth Flames of fire. The voice of God shakes the wilderness. God shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of God causes the oaks to whirl and strips the forest bare. And in God's temple all say, Glory. God sits enthroned over the flood. God sits enthroned as king forever. May God give strength to God's people. May God bless God's people with peace. And uh, uh, for our New Testament reading today, we go to uh, uh, Lomi 8, 12 through 17. Lomi being uh, the Romans. No. Uh, Lomi 8, 12 through 17. Nazgi, he does dee, he darling, not lee, he do got, but la, who he de da, I you yeno, I jehan, who quadali, gay song, I jis, da wadi, do his di, do da ji, yo he, yo hun si. I yaz, I ni, a da na do, gadi, a ye lan, do la, wiz da, ni hi hun, ji his di, de jan, nez di, na yi, na yi. Na ni a ye no, gila e, une la na hi, uda na do, ja na ti ne do hi, na zgi, une la na hi, ju we ji. A kla ye no, a de na do, a ji na, kla i, ta le ne, i ji ni la hi, ye gi, na zgi, i ji na, ye is di yi. Jawe Jays Gini, Agegan, Nela Hi, Unada Nado, Eji Nela, Nazgi, Ida Dizga, Aqua, Edo Cha, Jida Dizgo I, Adana Do Yeno, Uwasan, Daligo Neha, Diga Danado, Ganigay San, Na, na, ne, ha, na, zgi, a, yam, 
सुनेला नहीं जवाजी गैसा ही आले इगु जवाजी इगे नौपो इगाते ही जगमाला दी आगाती दी जगा वाला दी सुनेला नहीं सुजाने दी गैसा ही आले कलोने जा इजा लाही हा इगाते इदि इनो ओवा इगाल फ्लो यादि हा आगिलो योगा हिदि नास्पो इगाथ्लो यासो दि केस दि आजिला पोडिस्का इ And in English, Romans 8, 12 through 17. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if you live by the Spirit, you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, God, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If, in fact, we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. Nuli ni gong gong. Empowerment. Well, actually in, in Jalagi, uh, there is no real word for empowerment. What we use is the word for strength, which is within our cultural context the same thing. And so that's, that's actually what the literal translation of our word means. And we know that God empowers us through Jesus. And you know, uh, in my life, I have encountered many people who have seen God's works in this world many times and yet have chosen to minimize them, dismiss them, or to try to find some other rationalization for these great and wondrous deeds that God has done. And so we think about what it means from the first century context for the disciples to be empowered and to reach out to the people to motivate them to change. What motivated you to change? What works did you see? How did you reason that God was active in your life that encouraged you to want to develop a better relationship with God. Those things took place. Something happened. And you chose to listen. Well, what the first century leaders had to deal with was a new message. A new covenant from God to bring to the people. So they're the new kids on the block who are challenging the status quo. Who are saying that the old way isn't really working for them, and there's a better way. And in order to be able to successfully promote this new covenant, they needed to be empowered. And God had a plan. This week, the week of Pentecost, God fulfilled that plan. And God sent, through Jesus' ascension and through Jesus' request and give way to the people, sent the Spirit the living spirit of our creator, not just to the few, not just to the chosen prophets or the healers, 
but to all the people. And that power spread forth to all the people. So that we, we read in the, in the New Testament, we're not only the original disciples, we're empowered to do many things, but all the people who believe were empowered to do many things. There are lots of stories about that. Men and women both. So do your reading. Do your research. Tony uh, Petrucci of Temple University says that God empowered the first century leaders in different ways. Because there are different ways of thinking about empowerment. The first being in relationships. The giving of power and control to others, which maybe we do all the time, but the giving of power and control to others uh, is surrendering your power to someone else. Well, that's what God did for us. God gave us God's power and control in this world to be able to do great and wondrous things to help improve the quality of people's lives and to bring glory to God. And we do this in the relationship aspect, the empowerment of relationships through building healthy, functional relationships. Communities are built by relationships formation of relationships. One person, several people come together feeling the call of God in a way that it works for them and reaches out to the people. And when spirit is involved, spirit empowers people, encourages people to respond. And community is formed, people come together, and they grow in a ball in building healthy functional relationships, hopefully. Now, I won't say that's 100% true because we all know that there are communities where healthy, building healthy functional relationships is not exactly a priority. But it should be. And God has empowered us to make sure that happens. So we have a responsibility as believers to make sure that we are building healthy functional relationships with others. Now Tony says the next form of empowerment that came to the first century leaders was encouragement. And this is something that God continues to do for us. God encourages us with God's living presence to know first and foremost we are never, ever alone. God is always within us and around us. Through encouragement, God develops and helps us to develop positive feelings because of God's support. When something happens, you know, when somebody reaches out for help or assistance, and there's no rational way that that could happen, or even if there is a rational way that it could God gives us, God manifests a way for that assistance to take place. And we have positive feelings about our relationship with God, about God's working within our community, and about one another. In the first century leaders, God empowered them through encouragement to go out to the people to put their lives on the line, because their lives were on the line every day. Through encouragement, they strengthened those relationships. Miracles happened. Wondrous things took place. Communities were built. Here we are today. God within us reminds us that we are always in God's presence. And God's presence is always within us. And it's the little things that really matter. You know, you look at the big healings that take place, believe me, people forget those. And they focus more on the day-to-day -day drama 
than they do on the what if it all goes right attitude. And so it's the little things that remind us each and every day that God's encouraging us to continue to do the next right thing. And in so doing, we benefit everyone and not just ourselves. When we take control, when we, when we prevent spirit from flowing through us, then we, we shut off that encouragement. We step away from it. And of course, we sabotage our relationships and our efforts. So we have to think about that. The next, which is very close to it, as Tony points out, which is very, very close to it, is the psychological aspect of empowerment. Now, in our Indian religious tradition, we call this right thinking. The psychological component has three different aspects. One is the individual, that's you and me, each one of us. The next is the work, or in the context that I'm used to thinking about, in the terms I'm used to thinking about, the mission. The third is team. Now, we know through GSA's life that one person can make a huge difference. We all have gifts and talents that God has given us, and we know that one person can make a difference. But as normal human beings, who God has bestowed gifts upon, we work in teams because the body of God is supposed to be a team effort. And so uh, we have to think about it in that part. But in that context, we are, each and every one of us, an important part of the team. And working together, we do great things to help others and glorify God. Sometimes it's a challenge to do the team thing. Sometimes uh, priorities get confused and uh, other agendas overpower the mission. Now, my, I grew up military, my background is military, and in, in Native American community, community is the mission. It's the work. And so building community is what we're all about. Native Americans build communities. It's what we do. It's who we are. It's how we live. And so we think about what does it mean to put the team at an equal priority to ourselves in order to fulfill the mission, the work? Because God gave us work to do. We find in the New Testament, both in the Gospels and in the writings of Paul, that this is an underlying theme. God empowers us, or has empowered us, for one purpose and one purpose only, and that is to build community, to build the body of God, so that in unity we all join together. That's what we're supposed to be doing. It is manifest in different ways, but there are the small teams in which each individual congregation is commissioned to do a specific work within that congregational context. There is the medium team, which is we're part of a greater community. And then the larger team, which is we're all part of a great big community seeking to improve the whole world. To unite the people to come together as one mind, one body, one spirit within their cultural context. To empower one another and to glorify God. And in so doing, we do make things better for the next seven generations to come. Bring heaven on earth. Now in our readings today, you know, we see this affirmed because Paul in the letters of the Romans, which is like the text of text within the, the writings of Paul, the letter of the Romans is by far uh, the most uh, dominant letter in the New Testament. 
dominant writing in the New Testament outside of the Gospels. And that is, in Romans, Paul reiterates that because of the Pentecost, because of the power that's been bestowed upon us as believers, we are equal to Jesus. We are joint heirs with Jesus. We are brothers and sisters with Jesus. And Jesus affirmed this himself. If you go back to the Gospels, you'll find it. That Jesus affirmed that we are being empowered by God to do the works that Jesus has done and even more. So we have a responsibility and obligation as believers, a responsibility to acknowledge that we have been empowered by God in many aspects and to help others to recognize the living presence of God's empowerment, not only around them, but also for them and within them. And when they come to that place, when they reason that out, they too will believe. And they will join the community. That is our responsibility. We are not slaves to spirit. We are co-creators of this world. God has bestowed God's power upon us to manifest this. We are the ones who choose how we use that power or not use it, depending upon whether or not we are being hollow bone and allowing spirit to work through us unrestricted or if we're putting our personal agendas ahead of God's perspective, God's intention. And we have to discern what it is that is God's intention. We have to test people's motives. We have to test people's missions to make sure that they are of spirit and not of ego. It's very important because it's easy to get distracted, it's easy to get confused got to be careful about these things. One way of recognizing the difference pretty obviously is you're going to help raise all the people up or just the few or the one. So you have to think about these things. You have to test them with fire, as Paul says, to make sure that that power is being used the empowerment that God is striving for, the mission, is in right relationship with our Creator, with the community, and with all of creation. And then you give God praise. Psalm 29 is all about praising God. Yep. It's a hymn that shows, if you want to know what God's power looks like, read Psalm 29. It's all about the raw presence of God's power. And so we see that God, when God speaks, everything shifts. When there's social injustice going on, God is empowered just to make that change. That's when the thunder rolls. We use God's power to overcome injustice, to bring hope to the people, all the people, to raise up the quality of life for all children of God. And all people are children of God, whether they know it or not. That is our responsibility. That is what love is all about. Because God has commanded us to love others. No exceptions. It's through love that people are empowered. It's through God that we are empowered. So remember that God empowers us daily to continue to feel passionate about assisting others, building community, through building relationships that make a difference. How's that working for you so far? Walk 
GEMBIRA